This is Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. Good Tuesday morning, everyone. Glad to have you with us. I'm Jacqueline Matter. I'm Ray Collins. May the 23rd, a big change in the way in the forecast. John has details of what, tomorrow uh, afternoon, John? Yeah, I think by tomorrow afternoon you'll start to notice uh, some heavy rainfall approaching our area. But even today, I think you'll notice the beginnings of this system approaching us because the winds are going to be picking up. They're going to get breezy this afternoon. And a rip current advisory is up. A lake wind advisory will be up throughout the afternoon. And uh, I think it'll get a little breezy, a little cloudy, and maybe a couple of storms around as well, mostly in inland areas. Right now we have one in progress down around Northport, lifting northward across 75. Heading on up toward the northeast, that line of showers will be dissipating soon. The good news is we need the rain. And look how well the fire danger index responds to just a little bit of shower activity that we have had uh, some pretty good rainfall above average rainfall for the month so far and it's taken our threat index of wildfire spread from extreme down to moderate and low across the area so that's good maybe Wednesday's storminess coming our way might lower it even further a little bit of cloud cover around this afternoon again keeping the temperatures down just a tad plus the onshore wind flow doing the same keeping us into the low to excuse me in the mid to upper 80s across the region chance of showers mostly inland but tomorrow a big chance of showers for everybody and a threat of severe weather as well We'll talk about that coming up in a few. All right, thank you, John. Let's check the roads first off before the news. We've got a pretty clear sale right now in Manatee County. There is an issue right now at Orlando Avenue, an accident at Orlando Circle. Sounds like a pretty much of a side street there, not too far from 14th Street West and Cortez, just FYI. Farther south now into Sarasota County. Biggest block I see right now is just north of... Uh, the uh, Stickney Point Clark Road area, 41 in both directions there. Let's take a live look right now out at the uh, Diverging Diamond. Earlier this morning, we were told it was closed for tweaks until 6 a.m., but no, there we see some cars flowing right through from Lakewood Ranch. So it appears the uh, Diamond has since reopened this morning, and that's good news for commuters. Farther south now into Sarasota County, we'll see a little slowdown on 41 northbound down by warm mineral springs. Our top story this morning, at least 22 people are dead, dozens more injured after what British authorities say was a terror attack in the city of Manchester. It happened after a concert, and as Reed Binion tells us, it appears to have been a suicide bombing. A deadly explosion rocking an area outside of England's Manchester Arena Monday night as concert goers left the show by pop singer Ariana Grande. Inside the venue, there was confusion, a crescendo of screaming, then panic. Oh my God! A flood of terrified concert goers fleeing from the arena as sirens flooded the air outside. The blast rocked the area just after Grande had finished up her show. It was just horrific. The concert attended mostly by young fans, many of them tweens and teenagers. She went to the concert with a friend, um, spoke to her just before 10 o'clock, and we've not heard anything from her since. Terrified parents struggling after the attack to learn if their children were among the dead or injured. And I don't know how people can do this to innocent children. Grande herself tweeting, quote, broken. From the bottom of my heart, I am so, so sorry. I don't have words. Police are treating the explosion as a terrorist incident and say a suspected IED was used. Officials saying the blast was likely a suicide bombing. A man at the scene identified as the possible attacker. I'm Reed Binion reporting. Now back in this country, Homeland Security officials say they have, they have no threats involving music venues in this country. During his stop in Bethlehem this morning, President Trump had this to say about the bombing in Manchester. So many young, beautiful, innocent people living and enjoying their lives murdered by evil losers in life. I won't call them monsters because they would like that term. In the Middle East, President Trump is continuing his nine-day international trip today. The president spoke with Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas. The commander-in-chief says he wants to broker a bigger and better deal between the Israelis and the Palestinians than previous presidents have ever attempted. 
This comes only a day after President Trump told Israeli officials he was deeply encouraged by his conversations in Saudi Arabia regarding peace between Israel and the Palestinians. After meeting with Abbas, President Trump will lay a wreath at the Holocaust Memorial Museum and also give a speech before departing for his next stop in Rome. Meantime, back in Washington, former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn plans to plead the fifth. This in response to a subpoena by the Senate Intelligence Committee for records of Flynn's communications with Russian officials. According to a new letter from the leading Democrat on the House Oversight Committee, Flynn made false statements to investigators about who funded his foreign trips. Flynn claims his trips were funded by, quote, U.S. companies, but the House Committee alleges a Russian TV network paid him. Elsewhere around the country, rain in Georgia is causing concern for some. Over three days of heavy rain and storms have left this park in Georgia looking more like a lake. The basketball court and playground areas are surrounded by water. And one woman who lives in the neighborhood says heavy rain tends to leave this park underwater. But she's worried about what the standing water actually leaves behind as the water recedes. I'm worried about the kids coming out here after the rain dries up a little. It's really, really horrible. Children come out here to play. It's full of fungus, full of mold. Several creeks and streams surround that park, and it also sits in a bulb, which seems to make flooding unavoidable. But neighbors say something needs to be done with rains expected to continue this week. And over in Texas, powerful storms tearing through the southeast leave behind multiple reports of damage. A strong storm in the town of Stafford damaged homes and cars and even knocked down trees. As you can see, a local nursery also got hit with five greenhouses being destroyed. A witness in the Galveston area reported even seeing a tornado. But the National Weather Service has not yet confirmed any twisters in either Galveston or Stafford. Florida politics now another candidate entering the race to be Florida's next governor. The chairman of the Republican Liberty Caucus filed his paperwork yesterday. Bob White said his focus will be campaign finance reform, promoting limited government, personal freedom, and free markets. White will face other Republicans, including Agricultural Secretary Adam Putnam. The election is still a year and a half away in Florida. Thousands of letters and phone calls on both sides coming to Governor Scott's office about a bill to sell liquor in grocery stores. Opponents say the change would hurt small liquor stores, eliminate jobs, and result in a greater ability for minors to get liquor. Supporters say the policy promotes a free market and provides more convenience to shoppers. The governor has until tomorrow to sign or veto the bill or let it become law without his signature. Developing overnight, seven people, including three children, are in the hospital after two separate accidents on the water in South Florida. The first accident involved a crash between a boat and a jet ski. The jet skiers were both knocked unconscious in the collision and were rescued by the boaters before emergency rescuers arrived. The second accident happened half a mile away from a Miami-Dade County marina when one adult and one child was airlifted for their injuries after an explosion. I really hope that the kids are okay. They were, they were burnt, badly burnt, mostly in the face and the arms. Uh, the one boy, his hair was a little singed. It is believed that the engine compartment flashed due to fumes that were emanating from the engine compartment. Two other children were also transported to the hospital by ambulance. The cause of that explosion is under investigation. Meanwhile, two people in Fort Myers are recovering after they were thrown overboard near Big Carlos Pass. The boat was speeding ahead at full throttle when the pair went into the water. A good Samaritan was able to rescue the couple and call the Coast Guard. Crews quickly rushed into action and a member of the Coast Guard was able to jump onto the runaway boat and pull back the throttles. Wow, what a high drama there on the seas mm -hmm. in Lee County. Yeah, yeah. that's frightening. Uh, well, I think we're going to have some frightening storms, perhaps, yeah. in the state of Florida as we head into Wednesday. Uh, we're looking at the potential for some gusty winds, maybe some hail, maybe a few tornadoes as well, somewhere in the state of Florida. Um, oh. Can't guarantee it's going to be over on the Sun Coast, but uh, there's a large chunk of real estate identified as being a uh, possible threat zone. We'll talk about that coming up in a few. All right, well, coming up on Good Morning Sun Coast, are you prepared to defend yourself in the event of a violent crime? We'll show you some moves you should know after this. These are our heroes. They have sacrificed so much to serve our country. And now Granny Nannies is truly honored to serve them. We're here and we're ready to help. Call us today. 
Check out mysuncoast.com slash dining, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. For years, I've told everyone my Craftmatic adjustable bed was the greatest until I got the new Craftmatic Legacy. It has an adjustable pillow feature that's awesome. You're going to want one, too, when you see how little they cost. If you've ever had a bad night's sleep, call and price the new Craftmatic Legacy. It has so much more than other adjustables and still costs up to 50% less. Featuring a rising adjustable pillow rest, bedside power plugs, under bed night lights, and more. Available in all mattress types with optional heat and soothing massage. For as much as half the price of Tempur-Pedic Sleep Number and other adjustables, enjoy temporary relief of low back pain, nighttime heartburn, mild arthritis. Adjust the rising pillow feature to help align your head, neck, and shoulders. See for yourself with our 30-day in-home trial. So call Call and price one today for less, up to 50% less. You get so much more and it still costs less. You got to see how little they cost. Call 1-800-237-0214. That's 1-800-237-0214. Call 1-800-237-0214. Call now. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. When you want to get away from it all, to a place where you can do everything, or nothing at all, surrounded by natural beauty and all the modern amenities you might desire, then you'll want to be here, at the Wannabe Inn, on the beautiful shores of Minnesota Key, Florida. To plan your escape, log on to wannabein.com. Why settle for less? Get more for your money at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Nobody beats Subaru in service, quality, vehicle quality, and overall quality. And ALT named Subaru the 2017 top brand for residual value. Now lease the most fuel-efficient vehicle in its class, a new Subaru Outback for just $229 a month, or get 0% financing with complimentary maintenance included. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. At Granny Nannies, we provide your loved ones with the care they deserve, compassionate and experienced help right where you need it most, at home. Visit us at grannynannies.com. A helping hand and a gentle heart. Now, the official Suncoast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. So it'll be a breezy day today. Currently, things aren't too terribly bad. Southeast wind comes in at about 6, but that southeasterly wind, that'll switch around to the southwest today. And we have a rip current advisory. We have a, a lake wind advisory. We'll probably end up before too terribly long with a small craft advisory as well for our area waters, certainly by tomorrow as that front continues to sag southward through the deep south. 72, our dew point feels sticky out there, humid, sticky. You can almost feel like there are changes coming up in the weather as you head out the door this morning and an air temperature coming in warm at 76 degrees. So it's a stormy day in the deep south. Areas from Louisiana in through Georgia, parts of uh, the Carolinas seeing some fairly heavy downpours today. Traveling, well, the Atlanta airport may be a slow go. That's certainly a possibility. This low pressure area lifts off to the north and to the east. The frontal boundary stalls out and it'll be a focal point for showers for today and for tomorrow as well. Then the next cold front approaches. That cold front actually carves its way through the deep south, picks up from the energy left over of the stalled frontal boundary and drives a cold front through the state of Florida on Wednesday. Now that one will produce uh, our worst weather of the week. That'll come probably in the second half of the day on Wednesday into Wednesday evening and in the early hours of Thursday morning as we see a series of little impulses sink southward across the state. Now the thing is that the situation is set up with some upper level wind energy and we've got some winds aloft that'll be roaring across the state of Florida at about 120 knots. That's aloft. 
and we could see the potential of some larger hail. We could see some damaging strong winds. We could also see an isolated tornado or two. Can't rule that out. That'll be tomorrow afternoon into the evening hours particularly and then into the early hours of Thursday morning before it all clears out. So today we become windy. We'll have mostly isolated inland storms, kind of like we had yesterday, and then it will turn stormy tomorrow. The biggest change you'll notice today is that it'll be a little bit breezy. This is the Sphere Storm Prediction Center for Wednesday into Thursday, and again, they're giving our area for the second day in a row about a 15% chance of seeing some strong to severe weather, including the gusty winds that could do some damage, thunderstorm winds, severe thunderstorms, or the potential of some isolated pockets of tornadic activity. That extends all the way up to close to Atlanta, so we'll watch for that tomorrow. Look at the timing of the storm on the RPM computer model. We get some isolated showers in inland areas today. Nothing severe today for our area. And then as we head into Wednesday, we see the line of storm begin to develop, some of them producing some very strong radar echoes, closing in on us by around drive time, and then that first line exiting and another kind of frontal zone, showery thunderstorm activity zone beginning to develop during the late night of Wednesday night into Thursday day. Then that goes past and we're left with clearing skies and a lovely rest of the week. A little bit of cloud cover around today could help to hold temperatures down as well. But the onshore wind flow will do most of the job, keeping us into the upper 80s. And then tomorrow, that 80% chance of late day storms lingering into Thursday with a 50% chance clearing Thursday afternoon. Friday, Saturday and Sunday all look to be pretty nice. Memorial Day itself looks to be just fine. Back to you. All right, thank you, John. Sounds like a good weekend shaping up. As we head to look at traffic, it looks like in Manatee County there is an accident at towards South Bradenton at Orlando Avenue and Orlando Circle. Also a little bit of congestion on State Road 70. I-75 looking clear as you head into Sarasota County looks like some congestion on 41 and Fruitville Road as you head towards 41. We do have a live look at University Parkway this morning. As um, we have told you, that diverging diamond officially opened up yesterday, but it was closed until about 6 o'clock this morning. But cars back on the roadway, as you can see, going through underneath that uh, overpass. So if you are keep driving through that intersection, be aware of those changing uh, traffic patterns and the cars in front of you. As we head back into the maps, let's take a look at South County, pretty quiet through throughout that region. Not a whole lot going on on your morning commute. Well, 617 this morning, and you never think you'll be the victim of an assault, random attack, or home invasion. Yeah. But these violent crimes happen right here on the streets of the Sun Coast. Yes, that's but true. But could you protect yourself if you had to? Here are some self-defense techniques you need to know from our Jess Dowdrick. Protecting yourself against violent crimes goes deeper than locking your doors and installing a home security system. If you really want to lower your chance of being the next victim, police suggest simply being aware of your surroundings. If a bad person wants to make you a victim, they're going to do that if you're not paying attention to your surroundings. We have really good instincts. We were given those and we need to use them. Lieutenant Boyd says sometimes we forget to use the common sense techniques that we already know and attacks still happen. Anything can be a weapon. And when your life is in danger and someone is attacking you, we expect you to use every amount of whatever you can find to protect yourself. Sometimes you won't have a weapon. I think a lot of people think that a firearm is, is going to give them a level of safety and they want to carry a firearm. But the reality is, at least in my experience, is 80% of the time where you have an encounter, you're not going to be able to use deadly force. Kempo Karate Master Derek Clark taught me three simple moves that you can use if you're attacked, no matter your age, size, or strength. We're taking you out of your comfort zone because out there on the street, that's what's going to happen. And if you're familiar with it, you have a better chance. Most moves are so easy that anyone at any age and any athleticism can do them. First, if you're attacked and end up on the ground. There. Now I'm going to start pulling, Jess. There, turn me. Good. You got it. You got it. Keep kicking. Keep kicking. Grip your legs around the suspect's arm. Turn yourself toward him or her and start kicking until you can get away. Good. So the natural response is to kick. I'm not getting near you. And if the suspect gets a hold of your leg instead of your arms. Pull me in. Pull your knee to your chest. Oh, that drags. Yeah. And, and then, then you get that back. momentum. 
and keep on kicking. Move number two involves having a tool called a coubaton on your key ring. Let's protect the choke. Press. There you go, Jess. Turn. Good. Use those keys to hit. Good. You can get a coubaton online or at most martial arts stores, and your house keys can be used as their own weapons. Say I go put my hand up like too far, close to you. Just hit my hand with the keys. Go ahead. Yeah, don't be afraid. Just hit it down. I'm used to it. There you go. And move three. If someone gets a hold of your neck. So it's here. Hook. There you go, Jess. Good. Grab their arm with both hands. Squeeze me as hard as you can. Now turn your body and squeeze your elbow into your ribs. Oh, yeah. They are techniques that anyone can use. It's almost like anyone can use a, an elbow. Anyone can do a knee, just as long as you have some balance and a little bit of patience. 67-year-old Leslie Turbeville started taking classes two months ago. To feel more secure, I travel in Europe a lot. I have a 10-year-old daughter. I'm with her. I want to be confident about defending myself if something happens. Also, the physical fitness aspect of it is really important. Good. Turbeville is learning to defend himself. My goal is that I don't have to think about the moves. They're very complicated and there's real technique to do it properly. But the goal is to do it unconsciously without having to think about it. That takes a lot of practice. Everyone needs it at every stage of life. You never know. It could be that one time that you walk into your car, someone comes up behind you, and then you wish you took self-defense. I think it's obvious by my example it's never too late. I think no time like the present. Just Aldrich, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Clark says it's never too late to learn a little self-defense. Really a good idea for everybody. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at Jess doing all those moves. They don't look too difficult. I think yeah. I could probably manage to do that. I'm sure lots of people could. You have to tell your dates to watch out. <laughs> oh, okay. 622 right now. Still heading Good Morning Sun Coast. A Sarasota bus driver caught texting and driving with a bus full of students. We'll tell you why county officials are defending the bus driver's actions after this. I'm Haley Wilgus. The greatest show on earth is over. Ringling Brothers gives its final performance. We'll discuss the future of the circus. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. And I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. With Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-962-4112. That's 1-800-962-4112. Call now, 1-800-962-4112. This is an important medical announcement. Xeralto and Pradoxa have been linked to uncontrollable bleeding and even death. If you've been prescribed one of these drugs and have experienced these dangerous side effects, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that Pradoxa can cause more heart attacks than warfarin, and other countries have already issued safety warnings against this drug. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. The call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to Pradoxa victims, and thousands of Xarelto victims are filing their legal cases. Call the Drug Watch Hotline. If you or a loved one used Xeralto or Pradoxa and experienced uncontrollable bleeding, brain hemorrhage, or even death, you must call now. Call 800-793-6055. 800-793-6055. Rose takes her volunteering for Tidewell Hospice very seriously. But she knows how to have fun, too. And that's what she brings when we're invited to visit patients as part of Tidewell's pet therapy program. People love to see her. She really brightens their day. She makes people smile. And in end-of-life care, a smile can be a wonderful gift. Tidewell Hospice. It's more than you think. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. 
Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate or shop at Goodwill, I'm creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah. Well, there might be some sprinkles out there right now. Look off in the distance toward the uh, oh, mid yeah. mid middle left of the screen there. Well, Looking north. John told us what those are once. What are those called? Do you remember those little funnels of where the rain comes down? Uh, like a band? Yeah, maybe. There's another, another well, word John. <laughs> but uh, John rain says shaft. Rain, rain shaft. shaft. That's there right. All right, got his attention. We hear him from over there in the corner. But tomorrow he said we could see uh, two to three inches of rain, so a big change for Wednesday and Thursday. His forecast right. is on the way. All right, some parents in Sarasota County are quite concerned about a bus driver's actions. As ABC 7's Adam Cellini tells us, the students say the bus began swaying because their driver was on his cell phone. Take a look. This video of a Sarasota County school bus driver on his phone was shot by a Pineview school student during a ride home. I was on my phone and I, I noticed the bus was like wavering, so I looked up and I saw that he had his phone out. So the student decided to film it and share that video with friends and parents. They were obviously very concerned about it, so they all contacted um, the Sarasota County Transportation System for our school. Even more troubling to students is that this happened nearly three months ago, and since then, nothing seems to have changed. We know how like dangerous it is to be texting and driving, and especially like on a school bus with like 40 kids. Distracted driving crashes have gone up every year in Florida since 2012. The school district says the driver, Peter Boussier, was looking up a new route to avoid traffic, which is allowed. But protocol states he must be pulled over and stopped. Boussier was counseled by his route supervisor and agreed not to do it again. Then, students say route supervisor Bob Kopp passed down some restrictions on them. The bus supervisor came on our bus and said we were no longer allowed to use our phones on the bus because some students were misusing them. And they say they were told to let it go. Some parents think there should be more accountability. You're entrusting your child to that guy to take him from school to home. Peter Boussier has been driving a school bus here in Sarasota County since 2004, and according to the school district, has no disciplinary items on his record. However, he did receive a citation in October of 2015, but that was for making an improper turn while operating a school bus. In Osprey, Adam Cellini, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Well, parents are also asking the county for a better explanation of Boussieri's actions and why nothing has been done with his route or bus placement since that video surfaced. Apparently, he was looking for better directions on a, a different route, but yeah. that's not the time to do it. Yes, exactly. I was talking myself to one of the Sarasota County School Board um, directors, and they had told me that he was looking for a bus route, but even if that was the case, he is supposed to pull over yes. to the side of the road and not be driving. So. Are those video cameras keeping everyone honest these days. Yes, they sure do. Still ahead, reaction to a jury's decision of life over death for a Manatee County killer. We'll tell you how the case could affect others here in Florida who face the death penalty. SRQ Performance Parts provides parts and accessories from over 300 manufacturers so you can get that new manifold, carburetor, gasket, bolt kit, or nitrous oxide system fast. We'll help you beat the competition. Call or visit SRQ Performance Parts online today for all your high-performance parts and advice. Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Suncoast restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at mysuncoast.com slash dining. Hi, I'm Chef Judy. Every Wednesday morning, I'll be with the chefs at the Publix Aprons Cooking School serving up the most wonderful dishes. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. What Florida city is best known for space flight? Cape Carnival. Cape Carnival? Close enough. What condiment includes vinegar, molasses, and anchovies? West Chester sauce. Close enough. And now, a word from our sponsors. One off from the Florida Lottery. Now available for pick two, three, four, and five games. Miss by one on any or all numbers and still win. Since 1928, Karistan has been setting the standard in carpets and rugs producing non-allergenic wools that won't promote the growth of bacteria or dust mites like other carpets will. Karistan wools actively remove contaminants from the indoor air, making your home healthier. 
And there are many colors and patterns and textures to choose from. Come see for yourself. So many possibilities worth exploring. Manasota flooring. When you want to get away from it all, to a place where you can do everything or nothing at all, surrounded by natural beauty and all the modern amenities you might desire, then you'll want to be here at the Wannabe Inn on the beautiful shores of Minnesota Key, Florida. To plan your escape, log on to wannabein.com. Drive into Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota and discover big savings during the Drive and Discover event. Come shop the Suncoast's largest selection of Ram trucks. Get maximum cargo space and more comfort with a new Ram quad cab for as low as $24,999. Or get more legroom and maximum comfort with a new Ram crew cab and save up to $10,000. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. For the last decade, SNS Motorsports of Sarasota has built custom high-performance vehicles for demanding clients worldwide. They're now bringing their 50-plus years of combined build expertise to the parts business. SRQ Performance Parts is your one-stop shop for all your performance parts and accessories. This half hour on Good Morning Sun Coast, after hours of deliberation, the jury for Andres Avalos chooses life over death. We'll have reaction from the victims' families. Plus, parts of University Parkway closed earlier this morning, but once again open. We'll give you live updates to help make your commute easier. Over 100 active wildfires remain across Florida, but a lot of rain is in the forecast. John's details and news next. Your Suncoast News starts right now. Live from the ABC7 studios, this is Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. And good morning to you. It is Tuesday, a little overcast, big change in the weather coming tomorrow and Thursday. But John says, don't be surprised to see some wind also later on today. Good morning. I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Jacqueline Matter. Let's check in with meteorologist John Scalzi over in the Weather Center. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want boaters to be caught by surprise today. You know, heading out of port this morning. Looks pretty nice out there. A little bit of cloud cover. Everything looks okay. And then you get out there and by afternoon, you start to notice those winds picking up just a little bit. They'll be out of the southwest, so they'll like to get back into port. But they'll be breezy later on. Rip current advisories up. Lake wind advisories will be up. Um, no small craft advisories yet, but I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see that down the road. We're looking at a few scattered showers in the dying stages moving inland of Sarasota and Manatee County on their way to oblivion as they die out. We're not going to look at a lot of rainfall this morning. What we will see is a few scattered showers building inland later in the day along the sea breeze front, just like we saw yesterday. The drought indexes, the fire danger indexes, all responding nicely to the rainfall that we've had so far. We're actually above average for the month, still well below for the year, but we could be making that up in the next day or two as we see that system back to the west producing all that cloud cover approach us. And with it comes a threat of severe weather for the state of Florida. We'll be discussing that in detail in a few minutes. Our daytime high today held down by some of that cloud cover and the onshore winds to mid to upper 80s. And we will put in about a 30% chance of showers, mostly in inland areas later in the day. Complete forecast coming up in just a few. All right, talk to you soon. Thank you, John. Manatee County checking a little bit of activity there on State Road 64 heading in to downtown Bradenton. Also an accident there on a very obscure road, Orlando Avenue at Orlando Circle. Sounds like a real side street there. However, some problems uh, continue there. Farther south now into Sarasota County, you'll see some slowdowns first off on 301 southbound through Newtown and also on the other side of your screen toward the bottom there, you'll see a slowdown on 41 south just after the uh, Stickney Point and Clark Road area. Here's a live picture of the University Parkway under the I-75 area. Right now, the Diverging Diamond has reopened. There was some overnight work going on that closed it temporarily, but again, it is open and it is stalled right now, perhaps just at a traffic light, hopefully. We do have 10 lanes now, five in both directions for now, so we'll update that throughout the morning there. Farther south in the maps in Sarasota County, we'll check that and see a little slowdowns in each direction on US 41. 634 right now, topping our news this half hour. After four hours, a jury picks life over death for a convicted triple murderer. The Manatee County man killed his wife, her friend, and her pastor. Our Rick Adams has details on the jury's decision to spare his life. 
A 12-member jury has come back with their punishment for Andy Avalos after deliberating for around three hours on Monday. Avalos will spend the rest of his life in prison for the 2014 murders of his wife, Amber, a neighbor, Denise Potter, and a pastor, James Battle. I'm not saying that Andy didn't deserve a penalty of death, but uh, what we really wanted was justice, and I feel that him spending life in prison is justice. On Saturday, a jury convicted Avalos on two counts of first degree murder in the deaths of Potter and Battle and one count of second degree murder in the death of his wife. The state was pushing for the death penalty in this case. We're disappointed, uh, certainly, but we respect the jury's verdict. Uh, this was a case that we strongly believed in the death penalty. We certainly believe that. Uh, that the actions of the defendant in this case warranted the death penalty. The assistant state attorney Art Brown believes they presented a strong case not only for guilt but also the death penalty. But he says he's still happy with the end result. Our ultimate uh, primary responsibility is always to safeguard the community from dangerous individuals, and I think we've done that. For Rhonda Battle, the pastor's mother, she says through all this, it's not going to bring her son back. My heart is still broken, and it always will be. I'll never have a complete heart again. Family members say this has been a grueling process from beginning to end. They say there is now some closure. I'm glad that it's over. I'm, I'm glad that we can now try to heal. In Bradenton, I'm Rick Adams, ABC 7, your Sudcoast News. Under new state law, the jury had to be unanimous in order for Andres Avalos to be sentenced to the death penalty. Members of his family and his attorneys would not comment. An update this morning on a body found in a Sarasota backyard last week. Police say a dispute broke out near Leonard Reed Avenue and 32nd Street Thursday night. Witnesses say 33-year-old Alpha Factor Young began firing at others, but somebody returned fire and shot him. He collapsed as he ran away and died in a nearby backyard. A Sarasota couple is facing felony drug charges after deputies say they found meth and heroin in their car. Deputies were called to a gas station on Bee Ridge Road after reports of a couple fighting in the parking lot. When they arrived, they found drug paraphernalia on the floor of that car. Police recovered small bags of meth and heroin inside. Ryan Pestian and Sarah Ryan were arrested. During that arrest, a gun was also found in Pestian's waistband. An undercover operation in Manatee County ends with dozens of store clerks charged with selling alcohol to minors. The Sheriff's Office conducted a countywide operation. Underage informants went into 74 stores. A total of 18 clerks were busted, 16 in Bradenton, one in Palmetto, one in Ellington. They are charged with selling alcohol to a person under 21. This morning, the Charlotte County Sheriff's Office is asking for your help to find a man linked to a series of home burglaries. Deputies say 27-year-old Blake Guild is often in the northern part of the county or Northport. He's six feet tall with short brown hair and several tattoos on his left arm and chest. He's wanted in connection to burglaries of unoccupied seasonal homes. Anyone who sees him is asked to call the Sheriff's Office or 911. Also, the Sheriff's Office is warning those who own a seasonal home to check them frequently and alert law enforcement of any unusual activity. After some minor road work overnight that closed the road, University Parkway is reopened at this hour. Those looking to get across University were being directed to the interstate overnight. The $74 million Diverging Diamond Project officially opened over the weekend, but still some occasional tweaks will close it here and there overnight between now and the fall. The Florida Forest Service is reporting more than 2,000 wildfires have burned so far this year. Those fires have burned 171,000 acres with 125 active wildfires still burning as of today. Even with the recent rain we've been getting over the past few days, officials want to remind everyone there is a burn ban still in effect for both Sarasota and Manatee counties. And as the dry conditions also are impacting several businesses throughout the state, the U.S. Small Business Administration is announcing that federal disaster loans are available for businesses, agricultural cooperatives, and private nonprofit groups in six Florida counties that border Georgia. However, Sarasota and Manatee counties are not on that list. The loan program is available to those who suffered a financial loss directly rated, related to the drought. Loan amounts can total $2 million. Happening today, a lack of bus drivers causing some serious problems in Manatee County. Transit officials will meet today with commissioners over the issue. They're looking to add 16 full-time drivers and a transit attendant as well. Right now, there's an average of two operators working double shifts every day to keep the routes in service. This is causing some staff to resign 
or retire. And some students from Easter Seals, Oak Park School and Community Haven, and also Bayshore High, are among those involved in a special performance called Kaleidoscope Heartbeats. It's at the Oslo Rep in Sarasota. The young actors have been working for months to tell stories on stage. Organizers say it gives students a chance to express themselves in the public arena. These performers are amazing. It takes real guts for anyone to get up on a professional stage and to watch them share the characters they've invented and to take a bow is, uh, I think, inspiring for all of us. Kaleidoscope is one of the area's longest running outreach programs at Oslo. It began in 1995. Wonderful news. Well, we're tracking some tragic news also overseas. Of course, there was a suicide bombing last night in England at a Ariana Grande concert. 22 killed, 59 injured. Very tragic news there. That's right. We'll have Horrible. more details on that on Good Morning America after our show as yeah, well. That's a person that gears their concerts to young yeah. people. That's you true. Know, and it's just, yeah. why? What kind of twisted mind goes <sighs> after children? Just Senseless awful. Senseless and Horrible. heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Uh, we have some changes coming up in our forecast. Perhaps some severe weather headed our way by tomorrow. We'll talk about that in a minute. Also still ahead, jury selection in the case against Bill Cosby. We'll tell you how many jurors have been selected so far and what challenges both sides of the case are facing. Stay with us. That's next. Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com for Chef Judy's favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, step-by-step -step videos, and Suncoast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySuncoast.com slash dining. At Tidewell Hospice, we know it's never too late to say thank you to our military veterans. The Tidewell Honors Veterans Program has provided care to more than 13,000 military families since 2008. Tidewell volunteers help honor veterans through special pinning ceremonies that demonstrate our appreciation for the freedom our veterans fought to defend. If you know a veteran who can benefit from end-of-life care, call or visit Tidewell.org today. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. This is an important medical announcement. Barred IVC filters have been linked to punctured veins and problems with migration. Anyone who's received a barred IVC filter must receive medical monitoring and may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you have the Bard Recovery G2 or G2 Express filter, you are in a class of patients who should be compensated for some expenses. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to people who should have been warned about the risks of the Bard IVC filters. Call the IVC filter hotline if you or a loved one has received an IVC filter and experienced a vein puncture or required medical monitoring. You must call now. Call 800-329-3089. 800-329-3089. It's Lincoln's summer sales event here at Alex Karras Lincoln. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKC Sports Utility for $249 per month or 2017 MKZ for $299 per month. We are proud to introduce the newest addition to the Lincoln lineup, the all-new 2017 Lincoln Continental. We have a great selection and ready for immediate delivery. Alex Karras Lincoln, affordable luxury, winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award, serving Florida's Sun Coast since 1978. We are located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US-41. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. Now, the official Sun Coast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. Yeah, it's a warm and muggy start to the day already with 75 degree air temperature, dew point coming in at 72, making it feel Steamy, sticky out there, really. We have a little bit of cloud cover building. We've had some showers around as well, but the cloud cover mostly is coming from a system well back to our west. A uh, wind generally out of the east, 
east southeast right now. It'll be switching to the west southwest eventually. So uh, consistently, though, a southerly component to the wind. And it will become breezy even though it is really not so right now. It will later on today. The high pressure ridge nudged southward. The frontal boundary kind of stalled out over the deep south, producing some very rough weather in parts of the, uh, in parts of, uh, the deep south. Atlanta Airport under the gun. Carolina Airport's also under the gun today. The uh, local airport should be just fine today. I really don't see any problems there. Tomorrow, things could get a little dicey, particularly in the second half of the day if you wanted to get out of the Sarasota or Tampa airports or Fort Myer airports. It could be a problem. We have one frontal boundary that'll kind of meander, linger, wash away as the next frontal boundary approaches. That comes tomorrow afternoon. That frontal boundary sinking southward is going to set up a line of strong and intense storms that'll move through parts of Florida and the Sun Coast as we head into tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening and overnight into the wee hours of Thursday morning. So we'll become windy today. We'll have mostly inland storms, very similar to yesterday, with a little bit more cloud cover and a little breezier wind. And then we'll wait till tomorrow as we start to see the weather become a little bit stormy in the second half of the day. Severe Storm Prediction Center still gives the area outlined in yellow, which includes us a 15% chance of seeing severe weather, which is a significant amount of uh, chance. Uh, so we'll wait, see how that uh, kind of plays out. So we'll be now casting that tomorrow afternoon. But the main threat would be coming from strong, gusty winds, as well as the potential for some larger hail. And maybe, can't rule it out, an isolated tornado or two. Likely a, a, uh, a weaker tornado, but still, some of these storms are going to have some organization to them. So we'll be watching it carefully. The Atlanta airport also could be under the gun both today and tomorrow for stronger storms as well. Showers mostly inland later today, but then by tomorrow drive time, I suspect we'll see that line of storms on our doorstep coming through during the evening, some of them heavy, and then behind that some scattering of showers through the night till we get to about dawn tomorrow morning, and then everything starts to clear out. We'll be dealing with cloud cover today, though, and a breezy onshore wind keeping our daytime high temperature into the mid to upper 80s today with that 30% chance of an inland storm. Tomorrow, everybody, coastal and inland residents, get an 80% chance of storm. Some strong two to four inches of rain are possible. And then clearing out second half of the day on Thursday, leading to a prolonged period of nicer weather. Back to you. All right, thank you, John. Let's take a look at traffic this morning. There is already a few accidents in Manatee County. Looks like there's one off of Orlando Avenue and Orlando Circle towards Cortez and 41. Also, looks like there is an accident off State Road uh, or I-75 rather southbound uh, exit 217, which is seeing some slowdown throughout that area, as you can see on your screen. As we head into Sarasota County, looks like some congestion on B Ridge Road as you head towards I-75. We also have a live look from the diverging diamond at University Parkway. Cars flowing through there this morning, even though there are a few changes. So remember to keep an eye out on those changes as you make your way through University Parkway and I-75. As we head back to the maps, let's take a look into South County. Looks like it is pretty quiet throughout that area. Not a whole lot of slowdowns at 648 on your Tuesday morning. And this hour's health smart. This probably comes as no surprise, but not getting enough sleep can actually make you look less attractive. Yep, that is my excuse, actually. <laughs> New study says those who hang out, people might not want to hang out with less attractive people. <laughs> I understand. A study by Stockholm University took pictures of a, a person with a full night's sleep and then somebody else with four and a half hours sleep. Participants were generally less likely to want to socialize with those suffering from a lack of sleep. They considered them less attractive and less healthy. Researchers say these findings suggest humans inherently avoid those who look tired or ill as a means of steering clear of disease. And All those people yawning is, yawning's contagious. It's making me want to yawn, but yeah. I, I can't. Clearly you sleep more than I do, it seems. Oh. Yes. oh, okay. I think we both sleep. We try to get a good amount of sleep, especially with this schedule, you know. You go to bed about 7 p.m. I know. <laughs> you, you take naps, though. I take a lot more <laughs> naps, that's right. All right, 649 right now. Entertainment news, not very entertaining in this one. A personal tragedy is forcing a director to drop a big project. That's right. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Zack Snyder is walking away from the upcoming Justice League movie. Snyder's decision comes in the wake of the death of his 20-year-old daughter, Autumn Snyder, who killed herself back in March. 
The Hollywood Reporter says Avengers director Josh Whedon will step in to finish Justice League with his help. That movie is still on track for its November 17th release date. Jury selection continues today in the Bill Cosby case. A handful of jurors have been chosen so far in the trial. He is charged with drugging and molesting a former Temple University employee at his home back in 2004. He calls their encounter consensual. She does not. Five jurors selected so far. The trial is set to begin on June 5th. Well, it's been six months since wildfires took over the Smoky Mountains, killing 14 people and injuring more than 100 others. Dolly Parton's My People Fund yes. actually raised millions of dollars to help those victims. And today, she handed out the last of those checks. With all that money raised, 900, more than 900, actually, families got $1,000 a month for five months. But for their final check, they received a special surprise from Dolly of $5,000. That brings the total up to $10,000 for each family. So great for her to be able to give back to, to the people that she, you know, live in her own community. Wonderful. Yeah. Still ahead, a $13 garage sale purchase winds up being worth nearly half a million dollars. That's what happened to one woman. We'll have her story coming up. Our dad is an incredible man, a great father, and a hero who served his country well. He worked hard to take care of us. Now we take care of Dad with the help of Granny Nannies. A helping hand and a gentle heart. When it comes to drinking, what do you think moderation is? The U.S. Dietary Guidelines define moderation as up to one drink a day for women and up to two drinks a day for men. So what's a drink? The guidelines say a drink equals 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or a cocktail with 1.5 ounces of distilled spirits. Each contains the same amount of alcohol. Like to learn more? Visit drinkinmoderation.org. I am powerful beyond my wildest imagination. I will define my future. I will keep challenging myself to improve. Because I am a future leader of this great nation. I will make a difference in my community. I will not settle for simply chasing my dreams. I will achieve them. Because I was given a chance. An opportunity. At Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America. The ultimate leadership experience. Join us. We'll build a new future together. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. Come on in, welcome to our pet. Trust me, folks, you're in for a bed. I'm driving so relaxed. I'm why leave your bunk. It's all behind you, ready to blow your mind. In Batesville, don't be shy. Come and make the scene. Catch the crazy party inside. The hipsters here are gone. And dig, man, they're on to something big. Yeah, they're gonna flip your wig in Batesville. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. It's no small wonder anybody loves it all. I just love art that moves me. No small I mean, really moves me. Wow. Sunset Fiat of Sarasota presents No Small Wonder. High performance style. Let the art of Fiat move you. Granny Nannies, we've been making house calls for over 25 years. When you need home health care services, there really is no place like home. Grandma! A helping hand and a gentle heart. Welcome back, 654. Let's take a look at some of our top stories here on the Sun Coast this morning. A Manatee County jury took four hours to sentence a convicted killer to life in prison over the death penalty. 
Andres Avalos killed his wife, her friend, and her pastor back in December of 2014. And the Charlotte County Sheriff's Office asking for your help to look for 27-year-old Blake Guild. He's wanted in connection to burglaries of unoccupied seasonal homes. A crackdown on underage drinking resulted in the arrest of 18 convenience store clerks in Manatee County. They're all charged with selling alcohol to customers under 21 years of age. Taking a look at traffic this morning, there is an accident on I-75 southbound near exit 217 that is causing a lot of slowdown as you're heading throughout that area. So keep that in mind if you are heading out the door this morning. As we head into Sarasota County, pretty quiet from that entire area. Let's take a live look at University Parkway. That it is the spot of that diverging diamond that has just been open as of yesterday. Taking a look at that, you can see cars are already making their way throughout that area. As we head into South South County looks like not a whole lot going on on your Tuesday morning, John. Well, not a bad day today. We'll have a scattered shower around this afternoon, mostly in inland areas, otherwise kind of warm. Tomorrow is the day we'll have to watch for stronger storms. Thank you, John. Imagine paying $13 for a ring at a garage sale and learning it's worth over $400,000. That's what happened to a lucky London buyer who assumed the ring was a piece of costume jewelry. It was appraised and worth much more. It was a genuine cushion-shaped diamond. That's why people like to go to garage sales. Yep. <laughs> so what would you do? If you, if you found that kind of deal, oh would you go back to the garage sale and say, hey, look, I think you didn't really know what you were doing well, there. They sold it. <laughs> they didn't Wouldn't you? Sell it. <laughs> That's a tough question. Tough question. GMA is next. Big story on the way.